uh, report facts and deceased for maligning people. President Akufuado chides journalists. And Akufuado <coughs> chooses reckless uh, media. Well, uh, well, so over praise singers. Uh, soldiers on rampage in Damongo, 17 injured in clashes. Two robbers beating to pop after robbing Momo agent in broad daylight. The president of the republic is on the front page again. He says, uphold your integrity. President charges journalists. Third graphic business sense challenge unveiled yesterday. It was done here. And VCs risk 20 years imprisonment over unapproved courses uh, at the universities. Also, campaign launch to boost domestic tourism. And we're nine days away from the Green Ghana Day. Nana Dakwa, uh, Osea Dakwa, good morning to you of the Green Republic. Sea defense projects on course. Well, the Ketu South people are asking for their own fair share of the sea defense project. The Ghanaian Times. At Africa Journalist Leaders Conference, President Raps Media says criticism is not attack on press freedom. Ghana Health Service worried over decline in breastfeeding and you know that you have to exclusively feed your children uh, with breast milk for six months and then do complimentary thereafter up until two years. 100 million Ghana cities boost for tourism industry. That comes from the Minister for Tourism, Dr. Mohamed Awal. And uh, BNFT ADB is one DYA financial service provider of the year. A comes to the photo of Dr. John Kofi Bensa, managing director of the ADB. Jonathan Simon, your team out there, good morning to you as well. And also Bank of Ghana governor blames slow judicial process as only 7% of funds recovered so far. That's post-banking sector cleanup. That's what we are learning. Also Exxon uh, Mobil exits strategic, likely driven by insufficient volumes. Well, there's blame game going on there that they were pushed out. The Finder newspaper, ADB wins one D1L financial service provider of the year award. Rice in tobacco use among young female adults rising and it's worrying. Trial of alleged coup plotters starts on June 8. Remember ACP Dr. Uh, Agojo and also Dr. Mark Palm and they are uh, friends there. Critiquing work of journalists, not an attack on the media. President Nanado urges media to accept criticism in good faith. Innovative initiative to promote domestic tourism has been launched there. The final one is the Daily Guide newspaper. Free speech can't be uh, undermined, according to Nana Adedankwa Ekufuado. And uh, in Doom's $100 million transfers pop up in U.S. court. Also, 19 witnesses for coup plotters. Case starts on June 8, and SHS graduate kills dad in Tema. This morning, I've been joined by Dr. Bernard Okoboy. He is a former uh, legislator for the good people of the Lejukuku constituency in the greater Accra region. He's also a former deputy minister for health, and he's uh, on record to be the youngest uh, board chairman of the Kolebu Teaching Hospital. And also, George Pareado is popularly known as Pablo. He's the national youth organizer of the NDC. Gentlemen, welcome. Good morning. How are you doing? Good morning. Oko, how have you been? Oh, the guy is a senior counsel, the NDC legal team advisor. You don't mention your entitles. Oh, but you, a big you, man. you are doing it now. Uh, he's a big man. And, uh, is a socialist and uh, oh, the last one, the Cuba one, former MC, Com a comrade, and a former MC. <laughs> <laughs> He's just in his chin, he was not one at all. Anyway, Oko, how are you doing? How many I, of those marks do you have? By his grace, I saw, <laughs> I saw you using them during the campaign. Yeah, I see you have yeah, a lot yeah, more. Yeah, yeah you know, that's what I, I, I try to uh, advertise or promote the, uh, the cloth mask to okay. let people know that it's as good as the how they call it, the medical mask. Mm. And, uh, and uh, and also they need I'm to the still left out, uh, they still they need to still mask up. Okay. And I'm happy that right here we are all masking up. That's right. Yeah, I'm yeah. fully vaccinated. <laughs> I'm, I'm also yeah. fully vaccinated. So. Have yeah, you taken you, your jabs? Yeah, yeah, I'm fully vaccinated. But yeah, I wear the mask uh, yeah. actually for about three reasons. Right. First of all, no vaccine is absolute. Even the the one with the highest efficacy, mm -hmm. like Pfizer and Moderna. 95%. Mm -hmm. What it means that when you give it to 100 people, five of them can get the virus. Only that, when should they even get it, they will mm -hmm. not have severe disease. It will be mild. Mm -hmm. And death is almost zero. Mm -hmm. Scientists are careful. We don't say zero. We say almost zero. Mm -hmm. When you get um, um, AstraZeneca, mm -hmm. the average uh, efficacy, we are looking at about 75%. It means when you give it to 100 people, 25 mm -hmm. can get the virus. Mm -hmm. But those 25 
they will not have severe illness and death is prevented. Okay. So the point is that still mask up, mask up. after they, they had to call it the vaccine. Mm. But here is the good news. When a lot of us, mm -hmm. about 70-80% get COVID, when we drop the mask, the risk of you getting the virus drops significantly because mm. a lot of people are also covered. Okay. But if you, a few of you are covered, let's say 5% of the public, and 95 are not, when 95 are carrying the virus, then there's a, bit, a bigger chance that some of us, even who are vaccinated, can get the virus. So I encourage people to still wear the mask. Okay, uh, George, how are you doing? Very well, Doc. Thanks for the education. <laughs> so, Dr. Kubo is always shining. Go, go, yeah. Going yeah. forward, we'll try a mask. I wonder why he's not our deputy minister for health. But, uh, okay. yeah. He lost his seat. Six systems. Then it's a bit him. So. <laughs> <laughs> still my seat. We did not steal your seat. We beat you fair and square. And he knows it. <laughs> He knows that seat is... But he had, he had worked in Legio Kuku. No, but he knows the tradition. Saw the he knows the tradition retrofitting of, of the of yeah, the yeah. market. I saw the roads. I saw work and pay taxes. I saw do. public toilets. I, I yeah. saw a lot of stuff Johnny. that he had done there. He knows. He knows. Plus bills that he sponsored in public. Johnny, he knows the original the owners of the seat. No, it's not. It's, that seat doesn't belong to anybody. And we all agree. Okay. It's a seat you don't go more than once. It's just that any seat is going to break it this time around. Okay. <laughs> because Ben Oko has been... Well, are you cool? Are you cool? Mm. <laughs> as, as, as somebody who is on the ground, and mm. he's a people's man, and he knows. Ah, so you know. we'll the people look for six. us. Don't worry. <laughs> but he's there. They only find out. No, he's there. He's there. Ben is there. Anyway, anyway, great, great, great. So let's begin. The, yesterday, the president of the republic uh, spoke at the Africa Journalists um, Conference, and he, he indicated that journalists should accept criticism and and not see it as an attack on the press. There are some journalists who have raised the red flag already that sometimes it is not critiquing their work but these are plain attacks on them where the work is set aside you either put in party clothes or you either pushed to represent a certain side or whatever it is george i begin with you how do you take what the president said um let me say good morning to those who are watching us and also say that i'm sure the president is not in this country mm -hmm. Um, I listened to him when he spoke and said that um, when journalists are criticized, it is not an attack on their works. We all agree. Nobody is talking about criticisms. Um, anybody who speaks, anybody mm -hmm. who writes, mm -hmm. you should also be willing to accept some level of criticisms from mm -hmm. whatever you put out there. Mm -hmm. Because ideas are not sacrosanct. It's not just for only one person. Whatever you put out there, somebody mm -hmm. may have a contrary opinion. So that is fine. But what we are talking about is the attacks on media mm. between 2016 December mm -hmm. till 2021. There have been over 40 documented reported attacks from members of the security services on various media installations and personalities within that fraternity. That is what we are talking about. Mm. So the president cannot sit back and claim that he doesn't know that these things are happening. If not for anything, in the last one week, we have seen how, in the last one month, we saw how the National Security Authorities attacked City FM, and how they even, even the manner in which they went to arrest, uh, what's the lady's name, Zoe. Zoe and, and, uh, and Caleb. As for Caleb, we didn't see the arrest, mm -hmm. but at least we saw on video mm -hmm. how they entered City FM, the manner in which they wanted just to, mm -hmm. to, to effect an arrest. And the president cannot tell us that that is not an attack on media freedom. We saw what happened to the modern Ghana journalists. We saw mm -hmm. what happened to the WhatsApp news and various other people. And we all saw how Manasseh Awini Azuri has mm -hmm. been treated in this country. Also, when people speak, and excuse my language, but there is a group of young people mm -hmm. hired by the government on social media. How do you know that? How do I know that? Because most of them are government communication people. There are people who sit at the flag staff and I can name a few of them. Mm -hmm. They are staffers. We see the attacks on people. I remember last year when Peace FM apologized to the NDC. We saw how leading members of the NPP, who are presidential staffers, who are on payroll of this country, attacked people like Father Dixon and Co. Mm. The president cannot say he's not aware of all this. These are the things we are talking about. Mm. The, the, how the military, how the national security has been used, how Azugu and his boys have been used to brutalize people who criticize this government. Those are the issues we are raising. 
when people speak and then they are criticized, there is nothing wrong with people criticizing people. Mm -hmm. When you come and sit here, Johnny, and then you put out stories that I believe I have a contrary opinion to, there is nothing wrong when I speak and say that, no, what Johnny is saying is not mm -hmm. accurate. Mm -hmm. Those are the alternative facts. There is nothing wrong right. with that. Right. But what is wrong is how people have been attacked mm -hmm. and how even media personalities have been called to question they, they've been called in and asked questions about why were you discussing this program just mm. about two weeks ago <coughs> jfm discussed free SHS. that's right it was all over people called in people expressed their opinions what did we get to hear that they, they are trying to make the government unpopular and you have senior people in government calling editors calling um morning show hosts mm. calling people within the media space to tell them that don't do this the last one is the attack on captain smart and how he was asked out of Angel FM. Mm. He, according to him, not me, he says that when the CEO called him, he says that they were coming after him on tax issues. Mm. Up to date, the doctor who owns the station has not come out to deny it. Mm. That somebody in government called him and said that he was making the government unpopular and that if he's allowed to remain on air, mm. then they are going to come after him. What do you call this? This is not an attack on media freedom. So if I'm going to speak mm. and I'm going to be blackmailed, or they are going to come after whoever owns the station mm. to call me to order, and you don't see that as media attack, then I don't know what media attack Perhaps all this are. is happening on the blind side of the, of the president because he can't be everywhere, which is why he has appointed people and he gets daily briefings. Johnny, is it your view that the are president you, is getting you, the right are, kind of are briefing? Are you suggesting to us? Mm. Are you telling me that no, I'm the, asking you a question. The, president I'm not on, the president is not on top of his job? I didn't say that. No, exactly that, because all these things that are happening, Otunfo, when last month, when they had this Galamse stakeholders mm. conference in, in Kumase, before the two first spoke, you heard what he said. He said the minister for Ashanti region and the minister for lands and natural resources had come to him to tell him that he should stick to that script. Mm. <laughs> you don't think that is promoting the culture of silence? You don't want people to speak and tell you what the truth is and that everybody should control to you and sound the way you want him or her to sound? Mm. That is exactly what is happening in this country. So if they had even been able to approach the two first, and we all know the class of the Otunfo in this country. We, we, we know his stature in society. So if they can go on to the Otunfo and ask him to keep quiet and ask him not to speak, then clearly there is something wrong with our media space in this, in this country. And the NPP and the president himself cannot exonerate himself of, of this. Because mm. when his minister goes to speak to the Otunfo, indirectly is the president that is speaking to the tomb for because he's a representative of the mm. president mm. so the president himself cannot and you see in all this president Ekufado cannot exonerate himself why because instances where he's been given the opportunity his mm. response to criticism has not been one that is welcoming mm -hmm. he's called people names because he criticizes government and you know what that means if the president gets the platform and attacks or speak and calls out people for attacking or for criticizing his government Indirectly, what he's telling you to do is to keep quiet. And if you don't, if you are not a bold spirit and you're a timorous soul, there is no way you can come back and speak again. We have seen senior people who found their voices previously under the Etwal NDC administration mm. who criticize this guy. When you ask them why they are not speaking, they say they are afraid of their life, they are scared for their lives. Really? Manasseh have told us several. Mm. To the extent that Professor Kakari, who is a member of their party, himself came out to tell us that. They had to take Manasseh out of this country. They had to sneak him out because they were so scared that his life was, was, was endangered because he criticized this government. And, he, and he's not the only one. Journalists have been brutalized. I, we count 40 incidents, properly documented, attacks on journalists. Okay. And you cannot say you are not aware of this. If all these 40 have not come to your attention, mm. then certainly you are sleeping on the job and you don't know your left from your right. Okay, so, uh, Doc, yeah. I had a conversation with... Uh, King Kwesi Chidakwa last Friday, and he made a statement that perhaps has stuck with me. He said, there's a difference between government communications yeah. and journalism. Whereas a government communicator has the job of either putting a plaster or a fine veneer on everything that's negative about a government and trying to highlight the positives of a government. It is the journalist's job to investigate and to publish what is there to be known by the people. Yeah. And that one, if there's no public opinion, the journalists will form, form it. If there is public opinion and it's scattered, the journalists will shape it. And then if there is opinion that's pointed, that's straight, that's 
that's good enough, you publish it. Is it your view that government is forcing journalists to be government communicators to put a veneer on everything that's negative about government out there? Or you think that government is allowing journalists to really do their job? Well, Johnny, let me say a very good morning to all your viewers. Um, it's, uh, it's a wonderful Wednesday. We thank God for His grace. And um, I wish all your viewers very well. Now, let me say that culture of silence mm -hmm. as a phrase has been used in this country before mm -hmm. to describe what happened as part of our history. Mm -hmm. There was a time in this country where if you speak in a way that goes against the government, either people were sponsored to come at you physically, to either close your, your media house, to shake bomb it, um, excuse, forgive me, mm. or sometimes to physically arrest you and try to use laws like a criminal label to prosecute you. Mm. So because of the environment, the hostile environment, people had ideas, sometimes they just shut up. And that is what made us settle on that phrase, the culture of silence. So that Mm. If anybody wants to describe something which is happening, it might be a genuine occurrence. Mm. But when you pick that phrase, then because of the history behind the phrase, it has the potential to send a signal that we are back to that period. But mm. the point that President Kufuado is making is that we are nowhere near that era. And he himself, as someone who advocated and uh, uh, spoke for journalists in this country, he will not send us to that environment. Look, I've heard Kuku Baku on live radio say that mm. one of the reasons why he is a, a strong sympathizer of President Kufadu is that mm. there were moments in his life where he did not have the funds to pay for a lawyer. Mm -hmm. President Kufadu spoke and uh, stood for him, represented him in court without charging a penny. Johnny, now let me say that are you, are you by any stretch of imagination no, no, I, I, comparing a democratic rule yeah. to, a to a military rule? No, 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 I'm coming. Because I've, I've really, the scenarios that you're mentioning yeah, yeah. happened when you had no, a military no, no leader of a sort. You see, I wrote quite a lot. Okay. I've just arranged so that by the time I, I, I'll, I'll finish, you okay, appreciate you, okay. where I'm coming okay. from. You know what? I have monitored the media space and realized that sometimes when the media puts out a story, which more or less goes against the government and remember it's not every story that goes against the government that might be actually so mm -hmm. in terms of the content mm -hmm. i think we should also not be naive we should know that just as you say media shapes the perception of the public you can have a media house that can throw something at the dam that may not be accurate mm -hmm. there are media houses that have come to publicly apologize they are read um uh, how do you call tabloids. It? tabloids that come out every day to say we are sorry it's, we it's ethical it. it's, it's ethical excellent yeah. so the point is that once that happens, you should not also be surprised if there are occasions where government or those who speak for government try to question or critique something mm -hmm. that, has been, that has been put out by a media house. We should not be so comfortable with what comes out for the media house, but go out straight to attack a response that comes. Let the response come. Mm -hmm. Let the media house also put out there. The truth will always what? Like the vendor say. The truth to always stand. stand. Yeah. So for me, I really don't have a problem. If a media house, if TV3 puts out a story and we come out with our side of the story, it is for the discerning listener mm. to say that, well, I've listened to TV3. I've listened also to government position. But I think what TV3 says or is saying still holds. That should be left to the citizens. It's a simpler said than done. No, I'm coming. But, but Johnny, we should start from that point mm. that it is fair for a government to respond to something that is put out there mm. by media. That is not an attack on the media house. In fact, that is a vibrant and media sensitive government, which mm. we should even promote. If you, what if you had a station where you have a country where whatever is going out, the government doesn't care? You know, you need a government that appears to be listening to what is happening mm. in the media space. And I rather get excited when you have a station where a president can actually refer directly mm. to a discussion on a radio station. It means that what you people, what we discuss on TV and radio mm. gets to the seat of government. And that is the most important thing that we should but, celebrate. But in referring to what was discussed in the media, yeah. you would find that there's a setting, President takes a, 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 if you like, a position on it yeah. to say that you are saying that 
to give the government a bad name. Yeah. So, for example, CDD publishes that we lost yeah. over nine billion yeah. to corruption. Yeah. The media highlights it. Yes. Government flatly denies it, yeah, but yeah. government doesn't say what their figures are. That yeah. this is what we lost to corruption, or this is what we have not lost to corruption. Go media talks about Galamse, yeah. and up until now, the government has not said that. Okay, person one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in our government yeah. have been put out here to hold their feet yeah. to the fire for Galamse. Yeah. Talk about corruption. Government flatly denies it. So nearly everything that's said. Government yeah. flatly denies it. Yeah. To create a certain impression in the minds of the people that the media is against the government. Yeah. It, it shoots down the earlier point you made that, you know, bring your counterfacts yeah. and let's discuss. Johnny, you know, when you look at free SHS, for example, I listen to the discussion on that particular station. I mean, I'm a friend of the media, mm. just like I, I believe to be the president. Oh. I listened, and like you said, the media shapes opinion. You have a government that is investing so much into a program. Of course, no program is perfect. But you listen to a program, I listen to the program, and if you look at what came out, the content, it was more or less, the strength of the program was on the weakness or the challenges of the program. And here is it. Look at how fantastic. You have a president, the number one thing says that, well, if you go only that side and not tell the other story, I mean, you are, you are more or less we're weakening the morale and the strength that comes with the program. Mm. Johnny, the next day, those who hosted the program are still on air, doing their work, speaking their mind. That is the vibrant community. If the president, mm. after his works, the next day you hear that, oh, they have used some GRA to say they have taxes so closed down, or you've heard that the lady who, uh, who was on the program before leaving the house, the children have been threatened. Or they have to be, you know, the point I'm making is that if you try to fiscally prevent the media from doing their work, mm. that is not allowed. And the president repeats that he would prefer a noisy supine. Supine is, in, uh, how do you call it? Passive, mm. inactive. Mm. He, he, he would prefer a noisy and reckless media to one that is supine. But okay, and, you, and, you, you also know that calls are made. Yeah. And sometimes when the calls are made, the calls are made to people in very high rank yeah. within the media organization, and they ask them to back down instructions yeah. to the people having the discussion. You know, that in itself is manipulation. So you, you will not be knocking on the door, yeah. bringing guns, asking yeah. GRA to yeah. chase people. Yeah. But when you make the call yeah. to say, let the person stop this discussion, yeah. that in itself is suppression see, of press freedom, see, is it not? For me, I look at it two ways. First of all, if you're a media house, and you know that your content can be, or there are people who look at it and try to scrutinize, or look at its authenticity, mm. or how wholesome it is. It also makes you sit up. Sit up means that when you are preparing your content, you are, you are solid, you do your research well. Mm. The other side, like you are saying, is that there are some who would uh, maybe go like, okay, if I'll be questioned, then maybe I, I don't have the energy to try and respond, so let me not write at all. But the point is that, Johnny, every job that you do, Every profession you take, there are people who are who are out there to question the content. In, in fact, until recently, most physicians in this country just get away with everything they prescribe. The doctors who train us, no patient question them. Mm. But in our generation, if you treat a patient or you are treat a patient and they ask you questions, mm -hmm. you realize immediately that some have even read more on the they are well read on the subject you are treating them than yourself. So we are, because the culture we came to meet was that you can't do what, what you think is right and go away, we are gradually getting used, accustomed to the fact that, look, the patient now can ask you questions and yeah. ask you why you choose mm -hmm. a particular treatment. The same with lawyers. There are some lawyers, when their clients ask them questions, why are you going this line? There are lawyers who can be angry. How dare you challenge me? So naturally, it is something that comes with professionals in the field. It's like an architect who is helping you build a structure. Mm -hmm. When you ask questions, they go, ah, do you know more than me? But there are others who understand that no matter who you are, your work can be questioned. Let, let me give you a yeah. classic example from yesterday. So last week, Mr. Dennis Abwaji, your yeah. uh, predecessor, yeah. uh, or your successor, successor. was here yes, yes, uh, last week. Yeah. He made a statement regarding the Kenel Frank Ajiman yeah. conversation. And so we played back what he had said the previous week to him yesterday when he was here because he said, that nobody in his right senses will appoint the man to be in leadership position 
when investigations were still ongoing. So we played back, and he, in fact, he called WhatsApp news fake and all of that. So we played back to him to get his right of reply after a week. Yeah. Guess what? While we were discussing, somebody called the production to say, if we don't stop that conversation, it will stop MPP guys from coming onto the show. This is pure journalistic work being done. <laughs> and somebody makes a call. Yeah, but and heaven right. knows I'm not telling lies. Yeah, so yeah. How, how does that relate to the professionalism Jenny, that you're talking about? Because we're being professional Jenny, and ethical. See, but somebody calls and Jenny, says, if you don't, we will stop people Jenny, from coming onto Jenny, the show. The answer, I felt bad about it. Yeah. But because we are discussing it, yeah. I'm bringing it up. Jenny, the answer is very simple. When you lead a group, there are individuals who can try to appropriate to themselves powers that they don't, they don't have. have. So this call you are talking about, mm. I mean, it is very possible. That the person who called, because maybe as part of the uh, arrangement, mm. he or she deals with you, he can make that call. Mm. But if this case is brought before, let's say, the information minister or the president, mm. it's possible that a person will be sanctioned. Even at my level, at our level, there are many occasions where, as MP, mm. I have had to bring my guys to order. Mm. Because you have people, no, I'm coming, because you have people who try to appropriate. You know, there are people who, once they work with the establishment, mm. they think that. They have some powers that they don't have. And then, I think, let me conclude on Conclu this. Conclude yes. yours, yes. Look. The notes. A fiscal attack on a journalist cannot be justified. And the president, the pre we, we should, these are facts. The president of the republic, we know him. He's not a stranger. For we know him in public life over 40, 50. Mm. If you attack a journalist fiscally, the last person you get to support you is this president. Okay. If you try to intimidate a journalist, the last person you get to support you mm. is President Kufado. What mm. President Kufado will mm. always advocate for mm. is vibrant discussion, is arguments and an interplay of the mind mm. to question content, to critique content, and to hold content if you agree with what it is. As for that one, we shall allow. But killing of a journalist, I've heard people say, I'm what Ahmed Swale has been killed for long. I mean, we have a duty to find the, the, the murder. But we also know that the fact that a, a murderer has not been found mm -hmm. does not mean that the system approves of, of that. Okay. JB's okay. murder okay. case okay. is still okay. not, 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 okay. not okay. approved. Okay. And, and, and John, oh, just, just 30 seconds. Yes. Please, we should also appreciate the fact that mm -hmm. the work that journalists do, Johnny, mm -hmm. more often than not, you expose private citizens even more mm -hmm. than government. Mm -hmm. How many, uh, more often than not, the work of journalists mm. expose private, when I say private, people who are not necessarily government officials. Wow. Johnny, mm. just as, uh, how do you call it, uh, you, you can suspect mm. that, oh, okay, a government official can try to come at a journalist because you can suspect, as in think or something. Mm. The same way there are private citizens who threaten journalists for the work that they do. So for me, we must do everything we can to make sure that whoever is touched or harmed or intimidated in terms of journalists, whether private or public sources, we go every, uh, we go all out to uh, how they call it. Make sure that those people are not. So, so why is Colonel Frank Ajiman still in command position? If no, no. what you are saying yeah, that yeah, the president yeah, will not yeah, endorse yes, it, yeah, he's but, a commander in chief no, no, of the Ghana but, but forces. The response, that, the response that came from what's the name? Uh, National, National Security, Security said that yes, some uh, they had acted in contravention to mm. their procedures, mm. and because of that, they had been removed from National Security, right. seconded to wherever they are. Right. There was a script but analyst. But command position I'm now. Coming. There's a script analyst that... The, the most, most elite of all them no, are. No, the most prestigious. There's a script, script analyst that I listened to. And what he said was that the army would not take the, um, how do you call it, the investigations at national security mm -hmm. and, that the, and that they have their own internal procedures. And that it's likely that they want to exhaust that. There was a script right, that was right. uh, but, but called you don't, you don't So, so, so John, command position. No, no, for me, mm. for me, we should let them go through that process, just as we demanded for a report. How, from how do you go through an investigation and still have the man in cover? Because the 64 Infantry Battalion, the, the most, most elite, is actually the one that gives the, the national security the, the power support, no, if no, they no. want I, it. I, I, I mean, so I, now you have taken the man of Director of Operations at the National Security, but you have put him there at Jim, the 64 Infantry, and each time National Security wants help, he's the one who is Jim, putting together a team to go and no, support no, Jim, them. I, I don't know. I it, 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 it does give journalists a certain indication yeah. that the system endorses those who abuse Jim, journalists. I, I stand to be corrected, but I learned he was at the place as... The commander officer before he was. No, no, no. He was not the commander com officer. The, 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 the commander officer has been removed mm. and he's been replaced with a Jehovah.
but he was previously at 64 as one of their no, there, there is always one command. Okay, uh -huh. all right. So, 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 so yeah. I think, I think, um, as it is, we have to um, commend the move by national security. <laughs> See, we had national security coming out with a, a, a statement to say that our guys did not act well, mm. and because of that, these are people we sent back to their unit. I think that's a, a commendable step. Mm. The second step is to make sure that what really happened in terms of operations. If some, uh, it was against mm. if the military to their rules, if there are any sanctions, they are applied. I am calling for what the security expert called for. Let's give the military the time to go into it and then ask them for a report on what While happened. he stays in command position. Well, I mean... Because if you beat me and the next day you are promoted to become health minister, I'll get the indication that the government endorses that when you beat somebody, they promote they you. Promote you. That's yes, the, that's the, 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 I'm on a couple of editor's pages, yeah. and that's the kind of vibe that's going. You. So I when the you. president says, oh, we are not attacking you and we are protecting you, they take a dip, because these are editors <laughs> who write editorials, and, and that's the kind of vibe they have. No, I, I get you, but we should also appreciate the fact that the, the fact that you as a person, as a president, are against the intimidation or fiscal abuse of journalists. If institutions have their laid down protocols, sometimes it's difficult to also sidestep. The fish rots from the head. The president is the commander oh, in chief of the Ghana Force. The fact, let's say police. If a policeman is caught doing something and the police is their protocol is that we do A, B, C, D. Mm -hmm. The president cannot, because he's president of the Republic, sidestep all those things. He can demand that whatever protocols are uh, adhered to, once it's just they should finish him with report. Okay, Pablo, stepping, you, uh, you had uh, yeah, a few. Um, all that of course is saying would have been taken to be the truth if the president had shown leadership in the many instances that we've recorded in this country. And I will cite the example you just cited, mm. the CTFM incident. President Ekufado is the commander-in-chief of the Ghana Forces. So for Colonel Ejikum, if I mm. get the name right, Ajiman, Ajiman mm. to be promoted when he's supposed to be demoted or be on suspension or be interdicted, to be moved from national security. And if Oko tells me that, if Doctor tells me that, because national security is undertaking a certain procedure, mm -hmm. and that it is national security's processes that have been exhausted and that the military will have to exhaust their processes, mm -hmm. fair. But you don't push the person into a high-ranking position and expect any meaningful investigations to take place mm -hmm. whilst he's in that command position. The second issue is that there are so many incidents that have happened in this country. The Angel FM1 Captain Smart One is a clear example. If the president does not support such acts, mm. he himself, even by a statement of apology to some of these journalists, will clearly indicate that he doesn't support this. The president has not publicly apologized for all the assaults of any of our media personalities in this country ever since he assumed the role of president. Rather, what he sought to do is to justify some of these attacks and then cunningly put out stories and put a spin on some of these attacks. That is where the danger lies. So if the president doesn't support it, all that Okoye is trying to tell us is that President Okufaro does not support some of these things. But I will sit here mm. and tell you that he's the greatest beneficiary so, of this So attacks. you'd rather the president fires attackers? No. So, for, yes. Mm. So for instance, on the CTFM incident, yesterday was a clear opportunity for him to publicly apologize to the media fraternity with that single incident because investigations have come out to prove that what they did was wrong. There is nothing wrong with the father of the nation coming out to say that they didn't do what they, what they did was wrong, and I'm truly sorry. There are too many incidents. Manasseh's incidents are out there. Um, what's the name? Captain Smart's one is still out there. And just what happened yesterday about day calling and Oko telling us that people use. All I'll tell you is that it is the president that ultimately benefits. Because it is his government that is put on the chopping board. It is the government that is put under scrutiny. So if, this, if, if he's being criticized mm. and then people jump to his defense in this rumble style, of course, yes, you'll be happy about okay. it. Because he himself has not shown leadership mm. that he doesn't support some of these attacks on our media Thank personalities. you. Thank you. Oh, you want a minute? Yeah, oh, just a second. Then you let's know, switch yeah, so see, that we can switch. Uh, could you upon my brother, mm. the minister, For information. the one who represents the president in that sector, mm. visited City FM, mm. even before I think the investigations were concluded by National Security and told them that he came to more or less sympathize with them for what happened. Mm. And that it was, even on the face of it, it didn't look tidy. 
I mean, that tells okay, you that... you are missing the point. Oh, you are missing Allah, 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 Allah. Allah. Remember, it's because you go said ahead, go ahead. the president... So the one who represents him in that sector mm. went to city. Why did he go there? Because he could see on the face of it mm. that it wasn't... What, what happened was not uh, the way to go. In fact, if you, there are all the commentaries I've, I've, I've heard, I mean, for five... Uh, uh, weapons will be policemen to go for. Well, well, actually, maybe, seven. Maybe I mean, five. Or, 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 or there were not, seven, not five. Okay, okay. <laughs> Johnny, although I've not. Heavily you know, built people. Yes. Mm -hmm. Want to I'm, pick someone like Bella. Yes. Although I'm not a security man, if I want to pick <laughs> Bella, I'll come here, invite them for lunch, and at the lunch, tell them that we are going to that security. I don't need a gun. So the point is that for those ones that on the face of faith look very untoward, you have the information minister going there to show that, look, I mean, this can, this should not. The, the president chose to speak about the Joy FM discussion yeah. on free SHS. Yeah. He didn't send the information minister. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, and I mean, after yeah. the Caleb Gates, mm -hmm. this yeah. is the second time the president is speaking publicly. The first yeah. one was in a fellow no, no, Ghanaian but, speech. But the president, the he, he has, he has the not, the not the found it necessary to talk and about it. This is the third one. Right, that's right. Yeah, yeah, but, but, he picked, but, he picked but, on some John. Uh, uh, for, yes. for the side. president to make a line that, a line to, make a line like, uh, I prefer a noisy and reckless mm. media to a supine one, is to tell you that no matter their faults, they must be protected and preserved. I mean, uh, as for micro, you see, the reason why I don't want to, I believe every assault or every intimidation should be looked into. That I am okay. But I, we don't want a situation where the president will be citing micromanaging cases because uh, Pablo is here. Sometimes some of mm. my brothers also throw in some, which when you go in, uh, do not merit being mentioned. But because we are mentioning ones that are obvious, okay. all comes on board. Right. Point is that media houses and journalists in this country must and would be allowed by this government to do their work. Okay. The only thing I promise them is that we are also a very, very active and vibrant community mm. that will look into content and see how Okay, so uh, journalism is not a crime, and as media people, it is not our job to do government communication. Bella has a job to do. Bella, welcome. Thank you very much. I'm not sure how I ended up in that conversation about Well, <laughs> your, your name came up first on the text console, so... Oh, yeah. I see. Interesting. Yeah. Anyway, let's read some messages. Bella, good morning. I agree with you uh, on fix your attitude, but let me tell you something. In Europe, if you leave people, they'll mess things up. So, don't, uh, so they put things um, in place. Please, let's government put things in place well in Ghana. I guess what, that's what you mean. Ruben Nikwate Kwate from Teshi. Good morning, Johnny and TV3. About the ambulance service, if the systems in Ghana were working or if the systems were fixed, by all means, the individual uh, will fix himself or herself. So please, Bella, stop your arguments. In Rwanda, a child can hold a stakeholder responsible for his or her crime. But in Ghana, it's not like that. Why is that so? No system in Ghana is working. Isam Fauzan Junu. If an honorable boy is saying there's no culture of silence in Ghana as His Excellency Kufuado is making us believe, then as a country we are doomed. Greetings to Honorable Pablo, the youth commander of Ghana of the NDC, Kabila from UCC, Ama Moma, okay? I agree with you that the system must be fixed. Fix the system, fix the country. From Emmanuel inside Peve, and the eye that sees doesn't see itself. Why will the president ask journalists to take criticism of their works in good faith, but he himself doesn't do so? Shaibu Mashud from Tamale. Good morning, TV3. This is Awudu Tijani Wandani from Zibila. The citizenry need to fix their attitude and mentality, be patriotic citizens, and have the well-being of fellow citizens and the country at heart. Some time ago, the country had no ambulance. The citizens demanded for them with pressure as we're doing now with the fix the country pressure and now that we have them see what one of us is using it for even if there's a logbook do you honestly believe this driver or person after perpetrating this dastardly act will go back and record it into the logbook that this is what he has done the management of the ghana ambulance service should also do the needful and hand over the driver of this particular ambulance to the police for the law to deal with him squarely and fairly if we the citizens will amend our ways and mindsets we can equally demand same and more from our leaders. Hi, Johnny and Bella. Uh, Bella, just lose the debate. If the government starts arresting their own ministers, the citizenry will sit up. James Ashimadi. I'm trying to understand this from Tema. Okay. So you just lost the debate. Oh, he says I lost? Yes. How? Uh, if the government starts arresting their own, the citizens will sit up. Systemic problem. Okay, okay, okay. No, I didn't lose. No. <laughs> you made a mistake. Exactly. Johnny's name has to come this exactly. way. Mine has to start. <laughs> The mechanic who used the National Ambulance uh, to pack cement bags to the 
um, to a destination, uh, to whatever destination of his, uh, must face the wrath of the law to serve as a deterrent to others who misuse public properties for their own selfish gains. Good morning. Okuku Seku, watching you from Cape Coast. Good morning, Johnny. I don't know the culture of silence now and what we can call the media attack in this country. If all these previous happenings are nothing to write home about um, on media attacks, because some... Uh, because of some of the de defensive mechanisms in this country, I stand with the media. Mr. Perry said the hard truth. Our country will one day sink and we will all die. Oh, God forbid. Oh, From Dansu Donyina. Okay, we won't die. We won't die. Don't worry. Hey, fix yourself. For Bella, there will always be bad nuts, even in advanced countries. That is why we need the justice system to work in order to punish all wrongdoers and not be selective. If the system is working, a worker will not misbehave because he will be sacked or punished. It's not about fixing yourself. When the system is fixed, even if your attitude is bad, the system will correct you through the correctional facilities. Hmm. That's arguable. But anyway, we'll move on. Good morning, Johnny. I don't know why Bella is not trying to understand simple truth. <laughs> if it is only fixing our attitude, that's the solution. Then there's no need for leadership and structures. Someone needs to lead the fixing not leaving citizens to fix themselves. Also, remind EC to fix the allowances <laughs> of the 2020 election temporary <laughs> workers. Okay, thank you, Mumuni. That's a systemic figure. <laughs> <laughs> yes, while well, administration was tolerant. I could remember how Captain Smart attacked them, yet they tolerated his utterances. Now, the current administration can't stand it when he tried to criticize to keep them on their toes. Yet, when they were in opposition, they were... Uh, they were criticizing all the people okay in government the administration this administration is intolerant from osman bukuri song in tamale we need to award osman he sends mm. a message every freaking day man mm -hmm. <laughs> good morning johnny we live in a country where citizens do not take personal responsibility we need to change our attitude as Ghanaians. from caesar fariba timbili senewe so five for me two for yeah. you <laughs> <laughs> good morning johnny the level of hypocrisy in this ecuador government is appalling they were proud of the media and opposition and now that they are in power, they think the media is working against them. It's such a shame that they always say, uh, they're always in the media space defending all their wrongdoings from M. Sadat from Tamale. Quite a number of messages. Okay, um, I think since, since government communicators will never speak ill of the government and would also not accept mistakes, let alone clear the air when people ask questions, good journalists who attempt to speak the truth will always be attacked. And these are the attributes of a bad government. That's from Wilson. Good morning, Johnny. I disagree with Bella. Ah, what's that? <laughs> Calling for people to fix their attitude. This is the more reason why laws are made for people to follow. Either than that, um, everyone would have been allowed to fix their own attitude. Systems must, be, must compel people to do the right thing. Even if you are not willing, and by so doing, people's attitude will be fixed at a point in time, even if it's against their will. Please, I want to use this medium to appeal to the Ministry of Health to expedite action in opening the online recruitment portal for the 2018 NAC and NAP referrals, as we have been told that the financial clearance has been granted to the Ministry to recruit. Thank you, Adam Ibrahim from Tamale. Hmm. Okay, last, last two. The president is reconstructing the narrative. The issue is not about critiquing the work of journalists. It's about the intimidating environment that his administration supervises, where critical voices are either victimized or attacked by an army or regime, uh, an army of regime attack dogs. I have heard of people who said they were threatened with physical assault by regime loyalists for professing critical opinion. Issues are not responded to with a superior argument. Anyone who raises a critical issue is quickly labeled as an enemy of the government or an NDC stooge. So we now have a culture of silence inspired by the fear of victimization and the threat of verbal or physical attack. The environment is breeding sycophancy because there is high reward for regime praise singing. This is the issue. Koshi. But do, and finally, good morning, Johnny. The culture of silence is one of a kind that my leaders and colleagues in the GES can't speak about uh, the difficulties that we're facing in the sector. Mm. Eric, is enough. Okay. okay, Bella, you need to minimize this. I, there's a video I want you to play for us. Oh, okay. uh, no, no, minimize it. Okay, then the first one, look for mine. Look for my name up there. Uh, Johnny, yeah, yes. there you are. Okay, play the last video. Okay. Okay, so that's uh, the ambulance. An ambulance, there's an accident this morning I saw. I suspect the person is dead. But this is the, from the ambulance service. You see, there's an ambulance being put to good use. Um, they came there, but even though they didn't have the uh, spanner and all the, maybe you have to repeat the video yeah. to, to take the uh, victim, the person out of the, of the crushed vehicle. But they came there to work. That's it. They came there to work this morning. And it's on the ring road. So the car that knocked this, this man is gone. 
see his stuff is spilled on the ground. He's in there. But the ambulance was on call. I asked them. They said they came very, very early as soon as they called them. The police were there as well. And that's yeah. how to use an ambulance. Thank you very not, much, not Bella. Not plantain. Yes. And <laughs> yesterday, I'm sure you saw, Oko, the ambulance being used to carry cement. You have seen the statement from the... Have you seen it? Yeah, yeah, I've seen you have it. seen the video. Pablo, have you seen the video? Yeah, seen the video. Or we should play the video again. Maybe, Danny, play the video quickly. So we've seen how an ambulance is supposed to be used. And then let's see how this one was also being used. The car number for the ambulance yesterday, I did some digging. And it's GV53720. GV53720. Belongs to Sege. And it found its way in Budumburam. It was cutting cement. Okay, Oko, former deputy minister. Yeah, you know, let me say that in every society, like this fix the system, fix yourself and all that. In every society, once actions are not followed with rewards or sanctions or mm. punishments, people will do things, will talk about it, and with time, it will recur. I mean, it's, I wasn't surprised. Why? When I saw this. Why? Because... People can be very, very, if you know human nature, people can be very, very reckless mm. or indisciplined if there is no threat mm -hmm. of punishment. I expect whichever garage the gentleman works with, those that apparently service the car or whatever, mm. Mm. to sanction the individual who did this. Mm. And the sanction must be public. We must know that either he's lost his job mm. or they've taken away that contract. Of servicing. If the whole company mm -hmm. loses this contract because of the attitude of this guy, whichever company handles our vehicles, mm -hmm. the ambulance, will make sure that it is strictly monitored when it comes into their hands. So really, these are one of those few instances that you get to realize that there are people in this country who don't care mm -hmm. about what happens to the country. It's about them. They want to fix their home. Mm -hmm. They want to build their house. If they even have to use an ambulance to cut sand and stones, mm. they don't care. And once you are reminded that there are such folks in the system, then it tells you that, look, we need to be quite strict about also the rules and regulations and sanctions and behavior. What would be your and expectation of the ambulance service? Well, like... We like, have a tracking system. No, like, like Prof. Zaka, uh, Z Z Z Zakaria. Zakaria, yeah, Zakaria Prof. Said, Zakaria. I mean... If the vehicle had been in their custody and this, would, this had happened, I would be worried why they didn't know in the first place and it took someone to take a video. Mm. But like they explained, it was not within their, how do you call it? Uh, it was not in their Did hands. You, are you buying that explanation? No, no, I'm coming, I'm coming. I'm, I'm moving to the next step. <coughs> Jenny, we know that these ambulances were supposed to be fitted with monitoring. They uh, have equipment. trackers. Yes. Mm. But remember that they came in and after they had arrived, most of these things were put in place. It didn't come from right. wherever they put it. Right. After I had shouted for so long, yeah, before yeah, you moved it from there. So, in, so in, my in point is that, Jenny, I don't know, as I sit here, mm -hmm. whether they had put in a tracking device before it was given to the uh, guys to service. If they had put in, then we have to investigate to see the whether... The president spoke one year ago, the uh, State of the Nation address and said the ambulances will have track. I have the video here. No, no, no. But, I but, could but, play the video for you. No, 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 I agree. But my point is that sometimes you have to investigate. I have told you that the ambulances came in and then the installation was done. Mm. But we are being told by ambulance service that this had a challenge, even from the one. Mm. So according to the contract, they had to give it to their service, their, suppl their suppliers, mm. to put it in order. What I don't know as I sit here is whether the installation of the tracking device was done before it was given to the supplier. Mm. Johnny, if it was done before it was given to the supplier, then we must investigate to see why ambulance service could not tell the movement of the vehicle. Mm. But if it comes out that they are not putting because it had to, the problem had to be fixed before they put it, because remember they put in the tracking device before use. Mm. The letter gives the impression that this ambulance has not been in use. They were waiting for it, the challenges to be fixed before taking it over to use. So it's again it's being shortchanged. Oh well, I mean if it has a problem, why not? If the ambulance has a problem and it's, and it's still not it's not in use as mm. at the time mm. the after one year, then they would have had uh, what kind of responsibility would you like the ambulance service to take? Oh uh, because the letter they wrote yeah. doesn't seem to 
accept any kind of responsibility. You know, to even me, go to say that the, see, the vehicle was not in their fleet Johnny, I'm not is here, problematic. I'm not here necessarily to brush off every accusation or every uh, worry mm. people have against the ambulance service. But that's my nature. I'm always cautious, slow to indict someone when I don't have all the facts. If TV3 imports 50 vehicles for your use mm. across the country, mm. And there is one that realized that even on arrival has problems and you give it to the one who supplied to fix it if over a year it's still with the person and they've not fixed the challenge if later that vehicle is seen involved in something it's very possible that i mean it is not within your care so i think that's oh, okay, what, boy. What so the, the vehicles as i know and i followed it i yeah. interviewed the mercedes guys here and then the vehicles came in yeah I also had opportunity to interview the Minister for Health at the Orbis Flying Eye event at the yeah. airport. Yeah. In fact, I, I caught him right there and, and interviewed him. And that was where the conversation started about releasing the ambulances. Yeah. The ambulances were packed the, within the prisons of Parliament for a very, very long time. Yeah. And I closed from Ghana's most beautiful one night, and I saw it, and I videoed it, and I put it on air. Then the conversation started. Subsequently, all the 306 ambulances were moved from Parliament and put at the Independence Square for a big public show. Yeah. If the ambulance was defective, or this particular one was defective, why did we put it on public display? No, I, I don't know whether it was put. Yes, it was put there. Of... We had a whole national event for it. It was launched. You remember public? Yeah, no, no. It was yeah, launched. Sorry, no, 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 Everybody. No, no, no. It was launched. Oh, Pablo. At the time, you were deputy minister for health. Pablo, yes. The ambulances that were put at the Independence Square, I don't know whether the full fleet, from their statement, they are telling us that this one has a challenge from the one. And I'm but saying that this yeah. one is part of the 306 we imported. All right. I mean, so I mean, if then, it's part of the 306 and it had a challenge from day one, yeah. why do you exhibit it? No, Show I mean, it to the I mean, public. I mean, I mean it's, what you're saying is fair. I mean, if it was, that's, if only, let's grant, let me uh, grant it that it was also part of those vehicles that was displayed over there. Mm. Then the question is that, why didn't we, um, uh, how do you call it, isolate it to try and deal with the problem? But Johnny, mm. what if uh, it was after the inauguration, the public display, that in trying to put it to use, they found I had a challenge. It's also possible. Okay. That take it to security. I hear you. You have not told me what responsibility you want the ambulance service to take. Before I oh, let, let the investigations come out. Mm. Then when we see the, the, all the facts, based on the facts, it will then be fair to say what should Okay, happen. Pablo, yeah. you are the lawyer here. The ambulance service says this was not in our custody at the time this happened try to exonerate themselves from every kind of blame. Uh, 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 but this is what we have. Ambulance is being used to carry cement. Who else knows what else other ambulances have been used to carry? Uh, Johnny, it's, it's unfortunate, the statement coming from the ambulance services. Mm -hmm. Two questions that we should all have answers to, or they should give us answers to. What was the after sales service contract agreements? Are they telling us that a new ambulance that was purchased with the taxpayer's money mm -hmm does not have an after-sales service contract. The company that imported it, don't they themselves have a garage where they can fix some of these things? Oh. Because usually vehicles that are bought brand new mm. have a warranty attached to it. Okay, so, so to be fair to them, I get the, the ambulance service said yes. that the people who supplied, the company yeah. that supplied them, the ambulances, yeah. were Service yeah. Ghana Auto Group Limited. Yeah, so the service one. Ghana Auto Group Limited. Now, they had seconded this yes. ambulance because to, their garage was full yeah. to Nana Ofosu Gearbox Specialist oh, at Mount okay, Yes, okay. so <laughs> they have they have the duty to provide the service, but they had given the ambulance to Nana Ofosu gearbox specialist in Mamprobi because he had a gearbox problem to fix. Johnny, let me and then it ended up at Budobura. Let me point out the inconsistencies in this statement. Tell me. Service agreements. You are not at court, so take your time. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll <laughs> <laughs> service agreements <laughs> are between parties. That's right. The third party, whatever, Nana Fosu, should not even arise at all. Because mm. he has no liability towards right. the ambulance. Right. So it has not even become the case for them to put out the statement and even state the third party. The company that procured the ambulances, if from day one the gearbox was defective, what you demand is a total replacement or a new one. Mm. Because the gearbox and the engine are the whole machine you are using. So when I when I import in an equipment and then a critical part of that equipment has problems or has challenges, and after one year 
This ambulance has been with us for almost a year. After one year, it has not been fixed. It has not been replaced. Are we telling the good people of this country that for one year, their taxes are not being put to good use? Two, what is the relationship? What, what kind of structures mm. has ambulance services put in place? This morning, you raised very critical issues about fixing the country. Mm. And I listened to my sister, Bella, and how she was going on about we fixing our attitude. I agree that we need to fix our attitude. That one is not in doubt. But you see, leadership takes responsibility. You know why we elect leaders? Mm. So that the leaders sit at the apex and make sure that the systems work. We've set in place rules and regulations. We have laws that govern this country. So if there is a defect in any of the laws, mm. it is because it is not the law that is not working. It is because the leader who sits at the apex is not doing his job. Dr. Zakaria cannot tell us that they, don't, they do not have a system in place to track and monitor wherever the ambulances are. So immediately their tracker picked up mm -hmm. that the ambulance was in Bujumbura mm -hmm. and it was not at the safest location. Somebody should have questioned yeah. the organization the yeah. that had the responsibility of keeping ambulances in their custody. Mm -hmm. So for you to come back and tell us that it was not in your care so you will not take responsibility, it is neither here nor there. The ambulance services itself lacks a lot of professionalism. Oh, how, why do you say that? Today, mm. call an ambulance. It is not my duty as a patient to look for a bed. So it's the system that's faulty. So that, that is what I'm, So the system must be fixed. But, but it's not the ambulance services mm. job so, to find you a no, bed. No, no, no. Well. The ambulance, so, so the the ambulance, health should the ambulance services the by now mm. should have a system that tells them by a, a click of a computer okay. or of a, of of a, a tab, bottom, yeah. of a bottom, should be able to tell you where they are best and where they are not best. So that when they pick you, and yeah, everywhere yeah, in the world, when an ambulance picks you, yeah, they so know where they are taking people. you to. That's it is not your responsibility. When I have an emergency now, what time would I have to even look for a bed? What time am I even going to call hospitals? We read some judge's episode mm. about how a member of his constituent had to die because even the ambulance was not willing to pick the patient. Because until the, even when, they, when he had found a bed, the ambulance did not have a means of checking mm. whether the bed was available or not. It is problematic, and this is not what we signed on for. We signed on for good quality representation, mm. good quality leadership. That is why I support the numerous people who are asking the government to fix the country. Mm. Our attitudes, the human nature is such that okay. if, if, I am, if I am left on my own, there are things I will do on the blind side of everybody when I know nobody is watching me. But when I know that somebody is watching, and when I know that the system is in place, that is why you have a Ghanaian working in Ghana here in a multinational organization, behaving in a certain way, because he knows that the system in that organization right here in Ghana works. Okay. Okay. A, a, a common sense question came to me right now. I don't want to buzz it off for, for your final thought on that. So, you remember the Caleb and Zoe issue? Oh, you're going back. It was about some vehicles that had been procured by Maslock. Yeah. Maslock has been trying hard to explain to us that the vehicles were defective. Yeah. So they were parked. They were not exhibited. Yeah. If this ambulance is indeed defective right from day one, I'm still struggling to understand why we exhibited it to show to everybody that we had brought 306 ambulances, when in fact what we had was not 306. No, no, but, but you know, to be very honest with you... I think that the ambulance service is hiding something. Johnny, to be very honest with you... Is it not from the I am, <laughs> To be very honest with mm. you, I am not here. My motive is not necessarily to defend ambulance service. Mm. But I am more, I like, it's my nature to have all the facts before I go in a particular tangent. To say that, why did we display when it had a fault? Mm. It's first of all to assume, we are assuming straight away, mm. that at the time it was displayed, it had a problem. They said from day one, the thing had a problem. No, no, I mean, that's why I'm saying that to say that is to assume they had a problem. So where did the, when did the day one start? They, maybe they should be explaining no, to no. us I mean, what they meant by day one. Exactly. So, so what they are doing is perfectly in order. Mm. We ask all the questions to bring clarity on the issue. Mm. So when it is now clear on all angles, when I'm making my comment, I you know that fire. it okay. is fair and square. All right. Yeah. Okua, has a very, Okua has a very difficult job. You know, when you <laughs> sit in this situation, when it's against government, no, no, of course, it's a fantastic job. It becomes very difficult. His job this morning, perhaps. It's a difficult one. Yeah, right. yeah. Bernard Okoboy oh, is yeah. a medical doctor. <laughs> He's also a former legislator, a legislator for the Legiokoku constituents in the Greater Accra region. And uh, last week, uh, Mutala said he was going to the 
uh, NHI, we have not heard anything. Um, mm. Even him, he didn't know that he was going to. But it, it looks like the NDC has more information uh, about uh, where you are going next than you. Tomorrow is in the hands of God. Let's put that on the uh, on ice and then make progress. Anyway, <laughs> Giorgio Farriado, Pablo, is a lawyer and also the youth leader of the NDC. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for your time. I am most, most, most grateful to you and for all of you for your messages that have come in.